はい In this video, I'll show you guys three examples with a technique called the completing a square to solve a quadratic equation. And this is extremely useful when we are trying to solve a quadratic equation that's not factorable. So let's check this out. First of all, we want to have 1x squared plus bx on one side. As we can see, we just want to have the x squared term and also the x term on one side, preferably on the left-hand side. Also, another thing that we have to pay close attention to is we must have a 1 in front of the x squared. So keep this in mind. We must have a 1 in front of the x squared. After we have this, we are going to be adding this number on both sides. You have to remember this little formula. It's a parenthesis with the 1 half inside times the b value, and then square that. Work this out, and then add the result on both sides. And I call this the magic number. Because suppose, the original equation is not factorable, but after you add this magic number, it's guaranteed to be factorable, and you will be able to factor it, and you will be able to get a parenthesis with an x inside, and then to the second power. And you see, this right here, it's a perfect square, isn't it? That's the reason why this is called the completing a square technique, because of this magic number. After we have the perfect square, we can just go ahead and solve the equation in this form. Right? We can just go ahead and take the square root on both sides, like that. Now, here are the strategies. This is the example that we can work out. And yes, this one is the same as question number one. You can solve this by factoring, but I just want to demonstrate the completing the square technique right here. Okay? So first of all, we have x squared plus 6x plus 8 is equal to 0, and let's review what we want. We just want to have 1x squared plus bx on one side, isn't it? Notice that we do have a 1 in front of the x squared, so that's good. I want to have this right here and also the bx, which in this case is the 6x in this case. I just want to have these two terms on one side. That means I do not want to have the 8 together on the left-hand side, right? So let's go ahead, minus 8 on both sides. How's that? And as you can see, they will be cancelled it, and then we can just have x squared plus 6x on one side. And that's exactly what we want, isn't it? And the small secret right here is that leave a space right here because you are going to be adding the magic number in a second. So leave a space for the magic number. And then put on the equal sign here. 0 minus 8 is negative 8, and now this is what we have. And then we have to continue. We have to work out the magic number and add it on both sides. So the magic number formula says I will have to do 1 half times. The B value here is the positive 6, right? So I do 1 half times 6, and then I have to square that. And let's work this out. And it is inside our situation, right? So 1 half times 6 is 3. And then we have to square that. 3 squared, 3 times 3, we get 9. So this is the magic number. This is the number that I'm going to add on both sides, like this. And that's the second step right here. And we can continue from here. Once we add the magic number, this side is guaranteed to be factorable, and it's always going to be something squared, namely a perfect square. So if you just look at this, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Let me show you guys all the details. To factor this out, I can put down two parentheses, x and x, because x times x will give us x squared. And then to get 9, what times what will give us 9? And when you add them up, you get 6. Well, we know. Plus 3, plus 3, right? Positive 3 plus times positive 3 will give us positive 9. 3 plus 3 it will give us positive 6. So this works. That's correct, yeah? Notice that the two factors are the same. So you can say this is x plus 3, and then to the second power, like that. This is the perfect square that we can get, guaranteed. And you can skip this step if you would like, but as I said, I just want to show you guys the detail. And then we continue. This is equal to negative 8 plus 9. That's positive 1, like that. And now we can just solve this equation. Because we have a perfect square on the left-hand side, 
we can just take the square root on both sides so that this and that will cancel and don't forget to put the plus minus on the right hand side okay here we have x plus 3 equals to plus minus do the square root of 1 which is just 1 right still equal to 1 and now this means you have two equations to solve x plus 3 is equal to positive 1 and the other one is x plus 3 is equal to negative 1 for this equation, we can just subtract 3 on both sides, and you see they will be cancelled, and then you will have x by itself, and that will be equal to 1 minus 3, that's negative 2. And then for this one, we can just subtract 3 on both sides as well, cancel, cancel, and then x will be by itself as well, and this will be negative 1 minus 3, that's negative 4. So these are the two answers. And if you look back to the video that I did this equation by factoring, we have the same answer. And now check out the next example because the next example is not factorable anymore. Let's look at this one. We have x squared minus 8x plus 4 is equal to 0. And as I said earlier, this is not factorable. And we can try this real quick. Put the parentheses and then x and x. But no matter how we break down the 4, the factors of 4 can never add up to negative 8. This is not factorable. Therefore, let's utilize the completing the square technique, which we want to have these two terms first, right? 1x squared plus bx on one side. That means I want to have these two terms together on one side first. And by the way, we do have the 1 in front of the x squared already, so that's good, right? Be sure you have the 1 in front of the x squared. I want these two terms together on the left-hand side. I don't want to have the 4 right here. So that's minus 4 on both sides. That way, they'll be out, right? And what do we get? This is x squared and then minus 8x. And you know the deal. We leave a space right here for the magic number, right? So leave a space here. And this is equal to 0 minus 4. That's what? Negative 4, just like that. And now we are going to work out the magic number. Remember this little formula and do it on the side. Let me put down one half times. What's the B for here? Well, look at this. This is negative 8. Right? The number in front of the X. It's a B for you. One half times negative 8. And then we have to square that. And we do this inside out. What's one half of negative 8? Negative 4, right? Negative 4 inside. And then square that, negative 4 squared means negative 4 times negative 4, we get positive 16. And this is a matching number. And this is the number that we have to add on both sides, like that. And with that being done, the left-hand side, we can always factor it, and we can always get a perfect square out of it. So right here, just let me show you guys the steps real quick. This right here, once you factor it, you know you can put down x and x. What times what can get positive 16? And together, they become negative 8 when you add them. Well, negative 4 and negative 4, isn't it? Negative 4 times negative 4, we get positive 16. Negative 4, and when you add it with negative 4, we get negative 8. Another hint for you guys is that this number is always going to be the number before your square, which is this number in red. That's why I show you guys all the work right here, all right? Same factors, we can put this down as x minus 4, and then to the second power. This right here is the perfect square that we're trying to get, right? Okay, and this is equal to negative 4 plus 16, which is positive 12 like that. And now we can just go ahead and solve this by taking the square roots on both sides. Let's do it right here, and let's do it right here. And don't forget the plus minus on the right-hand side, isn't it? Okay, this and that cancel, and now what's next? This is just going to be x minus 4 equals to, let's put down the plus minus, and can we work out square root of 12? Is 12 a perfect square? No, right? But can we simplify square root of 12? 
Yes, right? Okay, to simplify this, we have to ask ourselves, what times what will give us 12? And one of the number should be a perfect square. Well, we know 2 times 6 is 12, but 2 is not a perfect square, 6 is not a perfect square. We are not going to use 2 and 6. But rather, we can use square root of 4 times square root of 3. You see, 4 times 3 is 12, and square root of 4 is a perfect square, right? Therefore, we break down the square root of 12 as square root of 4 times square root of 3. This is just a regular 2, right? Square root of 4 is just a 2. And then you keep the square root of 3 just like how it is right here. In another word, you see, we have x minus 4 equals to plus minus 2 square root of 3, like this, okay? And now, what's next? I still have to get the x by itself. And all we have to do now is to just add the 4 on both sides. Move this negative 4 to the other side, and it becomes a positive 4, right? This and that will cancel. Finally, and this is how we can present our answer right here. x is by itself now, and this is equal to, we write it down as positive 4 right here, and this is still the plus minus in between, and we have the 2 and then the square root of 3, like that. And since the 4 has no square root of 3, and this is you know, the square root of numbers, this is just how it is. We cannot do anything anymore. This is it. This is how we can present our answer. x is equal to 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. All right? That's it. And now, let me show you guys one more example for this. For this one right here, we have 3x squared plus 6x is equal to 15. And you see, we have the x squared term, and also the x term, together on one side already. That's good, right? However, you have to make sure that the number in front of the x squared has to be a what? It has to be a 1. And in this case, what do we have? We have a 3 in front of the x squared. That's no good. So what can we do in this case? Remember, this means 3 times x squared, right? So how can I get rid of this 3? By dividing, right? So. Let's divide this by 3. And remember, we have to do the same thing to everybody in the equation, right? So let's divide this by 3 as well. And let's divide this by 3 as well. 3 and 3 becomes 1, right, after you divide them out. And now let's work this out. We will have x squared. And you see, we have the 1x squared now. That's what we need to have right here, right? Be sure you do that first. And then right here, plus. 6 over 3, you know, just work that out, we get 2, and that's the x term right here. And you know, we have to leave a space for the magic number. So we do that, leave a space. And this is equal to 15 over 3, which is 5, like that. And we are going to find that magic number, right? So let's work this out. Put down the 1 half times the number in front of the x, which is the positive 2, right? So we multiply by 2 right here, and then we square that. What's one half of two? It's just one, isn't it? So we have a one inside, and then we square that. One square, we still get one. This is the magic number, right? So let's go ahead and add a one on both sides like that. Okay, this is excellent. Next, you see this right here, it's factorable, and it's guaranteed to be a perfect square. If you factor this out, you get x and x like this. To get 1, of course, plus 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 give us a 2. So that's it, right? And you will get x plus 1 to the second power like this for the factors. And it's a perfect square, like that. OK, on the right-hand side, 5 plus 1 is what? 6, just like that. What can we do next from here? Take the square roots on both sides. And don't forget the plus minus right here, right? And you see, this and that will be cancelled, it, and now we have the x plus 1, and this will be plus minus, okay, what is square root of 6? Well, 6 is not a perfect square, cannot do it. Can we simplify square root of 6? No, because the only way I can break down 6 is 2 times 3, but they are not perfect squares, so we cannot really reduce them. Therefore, it's actually good news, because we don't have to do anything from here. We'll just keep it as how it is. Write down square root of 6, all right? 
Lastly, this is x plus 1, so we can just minus 1 on both sides, and you see this and that will cancel, and we will have x equals to, we write this down as the following, put down the negative 1, and then the plus, minus, and this is the square root of 6, like that. This is how we can present our answer, and this is it. So hopefully after this video, you guys have a better understanding on how the completing linear square method works. And be sure you guys watch my next video, because I will show you guys the famous quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, be sure you hit that subscribe button, and thank you so much. See you soon.